Good morning, my friend. I hope you're doing well. It's about five o'clock in the morning. And I just realized that in the infinitely happier recast that I gave you in the last couple of weeks, I left out the sort of finale, which was the 10 ways to be infinitely happier, the kind of 10 ideas that I gave you. I did a tongue in cheek episode called 10 ways to be super miserable. And then I bookended that with 10 ways to be infinitely happier. So I'm going to give you that back today. Um, I'll put a little music at the end of it, but here is 10 ways to be infinitely happier. And I'll be back with something new for you tomorrow. And we got Tuesdays with Tata live coming back. Tata is back and well, and we'll be back on Tuesday with a new episode. So God bless you, friend. WLeeWarnMD.com slash prayer. If you need to connect with us and want to either put your prayer requests up there or pray with and for us for folks all over the world, WLeeWarnMD.com slash prayer. And don't forget the newsletter. I'll be back with a new newsletter tomorrow, WLeeWarnMD.com slash newsletter. It's everything about this community every Sunday, your best ways to start today. And that's what I want you to do today, my friend. 10 ways to be infinitely happier starting today. A couple episodes back, I gave you the 10 best ways to be super miserable. That episode has gotten a lot of response, and uh, some people have commented and said they love the, the tongue-in-cheek idea. But, but you know, if you really want to be miserable, I wanted to give you some tools to get that done. It's not the only self-brain surgery. It's not just about being happy, but you can also use it to become really super miserable. So I thought today it would be only fair that I give you the 10 best ways to be infinitely happier. I told you that when I released the super miserable episode, I said, hey, the next day I'm going to sit down and record how to become super happy, infinitely happier, and I didn't do it. I got The next day I got busy writing. I'm working on my book. My agent and I had a long talk on the phone, and you know we're dealing with this uh, uh, Christian Book of the Year nomination and all kinds of things have been going on, uh, and so I, I just didn't get that episode done. I released some of those Wyoming Tapes episodes and, and just didn't get it done. So today we're going to do that. I'm going to give you the 10 best ways to become infinitely happier. And before we do that, a couple more things. I told you we're going to ramble a little bit. There's a guy um, named John Patrick Weiss, W-E-I-S-S. You may have heard me mention his name before. John Weiss is a retired police chief from California, and he's also a brilliant cartoonist and also a brilliant landscape artist, fine artist. And he's also a brilliant writer. He has a blog and a website, johnpatrickweiss.com, J O H N. Patrick Weiss, W E I S S dot com. And John Weiss um, and I connected several years ago when I first started blogging and, and doing all this. Um, I took a course um, called Platform University from Michael Hyatt. And in that, uh, we basically learned that the nuts and bolts of how to build a website and how to develop an online presence and all that kind of stuff that's so easy to do now, days that nobody needs to pay to take a course to do that because it's just super easy. But back then it was not easy. It was, it was tricky and there was, it was kind of hard and you needed some help. And so I took that course, got a lot out of it. And part of the course was this forum where you could interact with other people who were doing the same thing. And John Weiss and I connected through that. We've never met in the flesh, but he was a police chief. And when Mitch died, he, we had some issues with the police and, and, and the way they reported that event and, and it just didn't add up. And John helped me sort through some of that stuff as a former police chief. He helped, spent a lot of time on the phone and in emails with us and and just gave us some really wise counsel of how we should proceed and and what we should ask for and what our rights were and and, and all that kind of stuff and just very kind. And then over the years, we've just emailed back and forth and we've become what I would call friends. I've got a group of digital friends that I've never met <laughs> through this blogging community. Um, and John Swanson's one of them, but John Weiss has just been really kind to me. He's going through a lot, lost his mom, his wife's sick, uh, having some trouble. And, and he's, um, he's, he's a brilliant, beautiful writer. Every Saturday he releases a beautiful blog post about all the things that are going on. And uh, you should check out his website, but, but I just, I, the reason I'm bringing him up is he's an artist and his work reminds me of some work that I just discovered from another person who listens to the podcast. Um, so go check out johnpatrickweiss.com. He also has two really good books. One's a, a collection of short stories that he wrote and another one is his cartoon art that always tells a story and always teaches you something about life. It's just johnpatrickweiss.com. Great website, great person. Um, but his landscape work, um, reminds me of 
a package that we received in the mail day before yesterday from Brian Dietz. Now, you've heard Brian's voice on this podcast before, back on episode 100 of season one. Brian was one of the people that called in and, and left a voice message and, and said what he thought about the podcast. Well, I did not know. I knew Brian had had brain surgery. I knew he had some some issues from a, an old brain injury and, and a brain tumor that he had. And I knew he had some encounters with neurosurgeons and I knew he was disabled. What I didn't know was that he is a brilliant uh, artist, a uh, fine artist. And we opened this package that came out of nowhere. We didn't expect it. And it's a beautiful um, lithograph, basically pen and ink drawing that Brian did. And I'm going to read you his description of it in his letter. Um, Dearly and Lisa, I hope and pray this finds you and your family well. I haven't been able to write much lately, but I haven't stopped listening. I wanted to let you know how much we appreciate your service. Enclosed is a small gift for you. It is a limited edition print of a pen and ink drawing I did some years ago. The subject matter is of the Castle Church in Wittenberg, Germany, where Martin Luther is said to have posted the 95 Thesis. The verse is from the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, which was a paraphrase of Psalm 46. What a blessing to know that Jesus paid our debt and that no matter what, we can rest in the blessed assurance that God is always in control and that in Him and Him only, we have true peace and a real hope for our future. As an artist, if I don't use proper perspective, a painting can end up looking skewed or distorted. I was taught to periodically put down the brush and take a few steps back from the canvas to properly evaluate what I've done and pinpoint any errors and corrections I need to make. If I am really struggling, I'll ask someone else to give me their opinion in order to get another set of eyes on it since they may see something that I'm overlooking. The godly wisdom and honest perspective you so graciously share helps us to step back and evaluate our lives and make the proper corrections. My wife and I, and now several extended family members, have benefited from your podcasts, books, and newsletter. We are truly grateful for you. God bless. Thank you, Brian Dietz. Brian, you'll you'll never know how much those words mean to us, and the the gift of your art is just stunning, and it will will occupy an important place, a prominent place in our home and our office. Um, Friend, Go to Dietz Studios, D-I-E-T-Z, DietzStudios.com, DietzStudios.com. He's got some brilliant, beautiful work on there. And so, okay, I've given you two different artists to check out already. I've given you two types of microphones to check out in case you're in the market for a good microphone for your podcast or whatever you need to record. And I've given you uh, some information about 3D surgical microscopy uh, for surgery, if you're interested in that kind of thing. So we've given you a lot already in this podcast. But guess what? We're just now getting started. And I told you I was going to ramble a little bit today. Lisa's out of town, and you're stuck with me, friend. So I'm going to tell you the 10 best ways that you can become infinitely happier. Why do I care about that so much? Just We've talked about this before. I keep beating it like a dead horse. I'm writing a book about it. The reason I care is that happier people have better lives. They live longer. They're healthier. They have less pain. They take less medicine. They drink less alcohol. They have fewer divorces. They pass on fewer pounds of baggage to their children and break generational curses. Happy people look better. They're more attractive to the king. I don't mean physically. I mean they look more attractive to the kingdom folks who are searching to the folks who are searching for the kingdom of god happy people help people find jesus happier people help people find peace and hope and joy in the in the freedom that they're looking for in this dark and sometimes terribly hard world happiness matters and you need it and so it's important friend for you to figure out how you can become Not just a little bit happier, not just 10% happier, but infinitely happier in your life. There's 10 ways to do it. There's millions of ways to do it. But I'm going to give you 10 of them, how to become infinitely happier, and we're going to start today. Hey, I'm glad to have you listening this afternoon. It's beautiful out there. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my amazing wife, Lisa Warren, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Hey, you can't change your life until you change your mind. I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get that done, you can get the show notes and more on my website at wleewarnmd.com or drleewarn.podbean.com. If you like this show, please subscribe so you never miss an episode. And please click those three dots and share it with your friends. I know you're doing that because we just had our best month ever, Action April. 
almost 16,000 downloads for the first time in history. The podcast is growing and you're making it so. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. Okay. Without further ado, we got to talk about how to become infinitely happier. And actually, maybe there will be some further ado. I forgot to tell you, today's the last day of Action April. It's time to take stock. Did you change your mind in March? And did you take action on some things in April? Did you make any difference in your life? If it did, if all these things we've been talking about helped you in some way, or if you're struggling, send me an email, lee at drleewarren.com. Let's talk about it. Lee at drleewarren.com. And if you need prayer, the prayer wall is an amazing community that sprung up from all over the world. And check it out, wleewarnmd.com slash prayer, wleewarnmd.com slash prayer. You can post a prayer request anonymously if you don't want to tell other people about it. You can post one for only me and Lisa to see, or you can post one with your name. And every time somebody prays for you, you'll get an email that says that they prayed for you. And when it's answered, if you get an amazing answer to your prayer, you can post that too. And it's beautiful. So check it out, wleewarnmd.com slash prayer. Hey, how do you become infinitely happier? I gave you 10 great ways to become miserable. But I wanted to talk a little bit about how we can become happier. Now, there's all kinds of information out there that you might imagine if you Google how to become happier. There's lots of secular information. There's lots of articles and lots of things. Here's a list uh, from Inc.com that I found. Ten ways to be happy. Scientifically proven ways to be incredibly happy. Here they are. Just for fun. I'm going to read them to you. Uh, Exercise. Seven minutes could be enough. That's number one. Two, sleep more. You'll be less sensitive to negative emotions. Number three, spend more time with friends and family. Money can't buy you happiness. Number four, uh, get outside more. Happiness is maximized outside. Number five, help others. 100 hours a year is a magic number. That's actually very true. Um, There's been some really good studies uh, that show that volunteering, giving away your time, doing something, whether it's for a church or a food bank or something else, makes you a lot happier. People that volunteer 100 hours a year seem to be a lot happier than people who don't. Why is that? Because they're sharing and they're grateful and they're not self-centered and they're working on other parts of their brain that are serving other people makes you happier. Number six, practice smiling. Reducing pain improves mood and thinking makes you think better. True. Number seven, plan a trip. Travel some. Number eight, meditate. Rewire your brain for happiness. And number nine, um, Move closer to work. Stop commuting so far. Spend less time in your car. Number 10, practice gratitude. Increase happiness and satisfaction. Those are good. They're all good, but they're not the best 10 ways. There's dozens of these articles, dozens of them. They're all from a kind of secular standpoint. All of them, and it's funny how articles written by secular journalists, and when I say that, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with being secular. I'm just trying to point out that they're not like Christian.com, not Bible.com. These aren't coming at you from my Bible worldview. All of them mention how important meditation is. Why? Meditation in that Eastern context that they're referring it to, to it as is basically calming your mind. It's learning how to stop listening to all the crazy stuff that pops into your head. That's really the gist of Eastern meditation. Clear your brain out and put a pause between, hey, I think my wife's cheating on me, and hey, no, she's not. She just went to the store for five minutes, right? There's there's a a pause between the thought and the reaction. There's, Hey, that guy cut me off in traffic. I need to kill him. Put a pause in there. Meditate and learn how to space that out. And, And that's what meditation is about in that context. But the the reason why meditation is actually helpful is meditation allows you to calm down, allow your brain chemistry to reset a little bit, and then decide how you're going to respond to something that happens and not react to it. That's why meditation is so powerful. But real meditation, the, the, the deep super meditation that we'll learn about later, is when you're listening and you're listening for the still, calm, quiet voice that God, he's a gentleman. He won't yell at you. When, when the world's bringing you the earthquake and the fire and the, and, the, and the storm, God's in the still, small voice. And he wants you to stop long enough to be still, he says, and know that I'm God. Let, let me help you here. Calm. I'm the guy who can calm the sea, right? That's why meditation is so helpful. And you get close to it, and God's gracious enough that he'll let you get close to it if you just calm yourself down and slow down a little bit. But if you really want it, if you want the deep stuff, the good stuff, you got to learn to listen. So my list is a little different. Number one, pray first. 
pray first. When you're unhappy, when you're worried, when you're stressed, pray. If you don't trust me, here's here's something to think about. When the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Father, teach us, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. They could have said, Lord, teach us how to raise the dead. They could have said, Lord, teach us how to walk on water. They could have said, Lord, teach us to throw mountains into the sea. They could have said, Lord, you know, teach us to throw out demons. But what did they actually ask for? They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Of all the things they could have asked, the most important, that story's in Luke chapter 11, by the way, all the things they could have asked, they asked him to teach him to pray. Why? Prayer gives you the juice to get through life. It gives you the ability to say, God, you said in your word you wanted me to be happy. Give it to me. You said in your word you wanted me to rejoice all the time. I don't feel like rejoicing. Give me that spirit. Help me align my will to yours. Help me get through this situation. Help me see how there's light here because all it feels is darkness. I can promise you as a, as a person who lost a son that asking God to show you the light when all you can see is the darkness is a superpower. It's a superpower, and it will help you. Pray first. If you want to be happier, pray first and then listen. So prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening for God. That's the, the, the back and forth of a conversation with your Savior, with your Spirit, with your Father, with your Creator that will help you, and you will become happier if you pray more. I promise you, you might not get all your prayers answered in the way that you think, and your problems might not all go away, but I promise you, your dopamine and your serotonin and your heart and the amount of light that gets through your corneas into your soul will improve if you pray more. Number two, reset your expectations. Um, Dennis Prager in his amazing book, kind of dry but really important book called Happiness is a Serious Problem. Dennis Prager basically says, stop having so many expectations. Like, don't think that it's your right, your God-given right to live 85 years and be worth $12.5 million when you die and have a 12, you know, four-story, 12-room mansion and a Ferrari. If you think, if that's what you expect and you think you deserve that in life, you are probably going to die disappointed because most people don't get that, right? If you think you have to live a certain amount of time or not have a disease or never have a car accident or never lose a child or never get the mumps or any of those things, if you think that there's a set of things that have to happen or not happen to you in order for you to be happy, you're never going to be happy because as soon as those things don't happen or do happen to you, you'll find another set that you apply the same filter to and you'll say, well, now I can't be happy unless I get this job or marry that girl or make this amount of money or my kids turn out to be super geniuses. Every day, friend, is a gift. Instead of demanding that the world give you something, be grateful that you're still drawing a breath and find a way to look at the day with gratitude and reset those expectations from instead of God owed them to you, you're grateful when you have them, and you're also grateful when you don't have them. If you can do that, I promise you, you'll be happier. Number three, aggressively, ferociously refuse to compare yourself to other people and refuse to allow yourself to believe that other people are responsible for your happiness. Friend, nobody else matters to your happiness except you that's a that sounds like a strong thing to say because we love our spouses we love our children we want to have good families all those things but let me tell you something lisa denise warren is the most beautiful person i have ever seen not just in her physical beauty she is stunning she really is she's just i'm way way out of my class with her she is just in a league that's so far above, I'm, I'm a blonde headed kid with a cowlick in the front and a cowlick in the back. And I'm not very tall and I'm kind of pudgy and I'm just not athletically gifted. And I'm, and I don't deserve to be with a woman like Lisa Warren. She is amazing. I'm just telling you though, she's perfect for me and she never lets me down and she's kind and she's godly and she's just gracious and forgiving and patient and, and smart and just, uh, just attracts people with her brain as much as she does with her smile. And she's a brilliant chef and she's a designer. And she can do all these amazing things, but she can't make me happy. Why? Why can't, why would I say that? Well, here's why. Because if I have to have Lisa doing us all the Lisa things that she does in order to feel happy, one day she's going to die. And if she dies before I do and she's the key to my happiness, then I can't be happy anymore. One day, she might let me down. 
she probably won't. She never has, but, but, but she might. And if she did, then I would have to say, well, her performing in this certain set of things is how I was finding my happiness. And now she's let me down. I can't be happy anymore. Right. What if she gets sick and she just can't do it and she can't cook and she can't do all the things that she does and she can't be amazing and all those things. She's frail and sick and feeble. If my happiness depends on the things that she does, then I can't be happy anymore. So so the fact is, Lisa cannot make me happy. She can't. It's not fair to her for me to think that she can. I find great joy and great happiness in our relationship and in just getting to be on the planet with this lady and getting to see her. It makes me feel good. It makes me happy inside. But she's not responsible for whether or not I feel happy. She can't be. And... I can't compare myself to any other person either because my comparisons with them will be artificial, poorly informed because I only know what they show me, right? And they'll never be accurate. And so if you try to compare or you try to expect another person to provide you with happiness, you will never be happy. And so aggressively, ferociously refuse to compare and refuse to believe that another person can make you happy or by the other standard, by the other side of the coin, another person can't also then make you unhappy, right? You've got to be happy all by yourself, friend. Number four, another one that was on the other list, double your gratitude and then double it again. Everything in your life that you have right now that you put your eyes on, if you're in your room, look at there's a there's a clock on your mantle. Give thanks that you have that clock. Look down at the smartphone that you're listening to this podcast on and give thanks that you have it because 98% of the people in the world won't ever be able to afford that smartphone. If you are able to walk on two legs, give thanks for that because there's lots of people that can't. I saw a person not long ago that will never walk again, never move their arms or legs again. You don't if you if you can, then give thanks for that. Give thanks for everything in your life. Go around your house. Go around your relationships. Go around your bank account. And and no matter how bad it looks to you, give thanks because there's millions and billions of people who would trade what you have in a heartbeat. And here's the secret when you are grateful, when you go through the process of telling God that you're thankful for things, including your very breath, It changes your brain chemistry. It clears the fog of negativity, and it gives you the ability to see that things aren't as bad as you think they are. And guess what? You'll feel happy. So double your gratitude, then double it again, and double it again. And if you still don't feel happy, double it some more, and eventually it'll happen. You'll trust me because you'll start being happier. So, friend, you want to be happy? Double, double, double your gratitude, your gratitude, your thankfulness. Number five. Stop using surrogates for stuff. If you are unhappy, stop drinking alcohol and trying to make yourself not have to think about it and then having to pay the tomorrow tax the next day and still having the same thing that you're unhappy about. If you're unhappy, quit eating Cheetos and thinking that you can eat your way into feeling better because you can't because then you'll be covered in that red stuff. It'll be stuck all over your sofa. You'll be mad at yourself the next day. You'll have diarrhea and you'll be fatter and you won't be happy. If you're unhappy, quit spending money trying to buy something that you think will make you happy because it won't. So stop using surrogates, friend. Surrogates are for suckers. Fix the thing that's making you unhappy or just decide to be happy anyway if you can't change it. You get the theme here? The theme is circumstances should never be allowed to make you unhappy. You should be happy just because you choose to be happy. And that morphs into number six, which is aggressively, absolutely, steadfastly refuse victim status. One of the biggest things that keeps people unhappy is when they think they are a victim. And it happens to all of us because victimhood, from a neuroscience standpoint, is a powerful drug. Self-pity is a powerful drug. It's as powerful as narcotics, functional MRI scans show, that the idea that you can sit there and feel sorry for yourself, and it makes you feel better for a little while to feel sorry for yourself and say, you know, if only so-and-so would do this and I could get that other job, or if only she wouldn't bust my chops so much, if if my dad would just respect me more, if my mom had shown me more unconditional love, then I wouldn't be the way I am. Well, guess what? They haven't been able to do that stuff for a long time. 
if your parents were past. If they were bad parents, I'm sorry. But you don't have to live in the past anymore. You can choose to respect yourself now. You can give yourself unconditional love because Jesus died for you and you didn't deserve that. And he did it for you. He loves you. He loves you, friend. So let him love you. Now, when I'm talking about victim status, Victor Frankl wrote Man's Search for Meaning. The guy was a concentration camp survivor, right? And he said, you know what? The one thing the Nazis couldn't do, they could imprison us, they could punish us, they could beat us, they could starve us, they could routinely, serially, verbally abuse us, they could march our friends into gas chambers and they don't come out and we know what happened in there. They could constantly hang the threat of death over our heads, constantly call us dogs, tattoo us, number us, they could do all those things to us. They could not make us feel a certain way about it. And the ones who were wired to say, you know what? You can't make me give up hope. You can't make me stop loving you. You can't make me stop believing in my God. You can't take that away from me, no matter how much you beat me or if you kill me. You can't make me think I'm a victim here. Victor Frankl said, pain and suffering cease to be perceived as so when they are given meaning and purpose. So, friend, you're not a victim And if you are a victim, let's say that you are. Let's say that you were abused by your Little League coach when you were a kid and you were actually victimized. Well, guess what? If you're not currently in that state, you can change that. You can take that victimhood status, that thing that happened to you, and you can make it part of your story and you can use that to help somebody else. And you can take power back from that person who took it from you. If you're in an abusive relationship right now, by the way, get out of it. If somebody's hurting you with their words, with their deeds, with their sexuality, if somebody is abusing you physically or emotionally, get out of there. And I'm not saying necessarily you have to divorce them, but you need to get out of that situation until it can be repaired and they can repent and they can be healed or counseled or therapy can happen or forgiveness can occur. Or if it can't, then you need to be out permanently. But you don't have to stay in the ro- under the roof of an abuser one more day. You need to get out of there. And that's the first step in taking power and stop being a victim, okay? It's not always that easy. I know. I know. I mean, I know. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying if you want to be happier, stop allowing yourself to live in a victim state, okay? Don't, don't hear me wrong. I'm not, I'm not apologizing for the person doing those things to you. I'm telling you, you need to get out of there. And I'm not saying that painful, terrible things don't happen in the past that hurt us and mess us, mess up our lives. They do. There's a guy that's going to be on our podcast, my podcast soon, who was serially sexually abused by his little league coach for years and it wrecked him. But guess what? He overcame that event by becoming a pastor, writing books, helping thousands of people. And he's taken that story and turned it into something beautiful. That's what God's talking about, by the way, when he says, I can turn your mourning into dancing. I can give you beauty for ashes. So again, just refuse, steadfastly refuse to allow yourself to feel like a powerless victim. If you're actually a victim, at least take the power and say, you know what? You can, you might have done this to me. You might be doing this to me, but I'm not going to let you take my hope. I'm not giving you my decision that I'm going to be happy in my life. And if I have to get rid of you and get out of here in order to be that, I'll do it because I've got a, I've got, I'm not going to be a victim. I'm not going to live in a victim state. Refuse victim status. Go read Man's Search for Meaning if you've never read it. You need to read it. It's a powerful book. It's a short, easy book to read, but read it. Number seven, speaking of reading, read more. If you're a person who only reads one genre, you only read graphic novels, you only read historical fiction, you only read romance, whatever. If you're only reading one genre, you need to change genres because if you don't feel happy, you need to read more books and you need to read books from people who have overcome great things, hard things, who have accomplished great things, who have written great lessons and advice, who have lived through hard things and survived them, who have overcome victim status, who have learned to be the power of gratitude. You need to read books by people who have done some of the things that you're going through and learn from their mistakes and their triumphs so you can too and you don't have to repeat their mistakes read more change genres shake it up read more watch less television because television sucks the dopamine out of your brain over time every study that looks at it shows that people that watch more tv are less happy than people who watch less tv that does not make you happy it just is a surrogate for passing time so quit it read more Multiple studies have shown that the more you read, the smarter you become, the better you process information, and the happier you feel. 
Number eight, forgive people. Yes, even those people, whoever it is, especially the the, the abusers, the, the people who've hurt you in the past, even if you had to get away from them, forgive them. Don't give them the power to make you bitter. Don't give them the power to make you unhappy. Don't give them the power to make you perpetually live in a victim state. Take it back by forgiving them. Jesus did it brilliantly on the cross. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Right as they were driving the nails into his hands and murdering him. Why did he do that? First of all, he loves them enough to want them to not be punished for their sins. But number two, he's showing us that in our worst moments, when people are the worst to us, we can take the power back by forgiving. And that makes us happier. It'll make you happier, friend. Number nine, do something. If you're tired and unhappy and stuck and miserable and you can't make it happen, get up and do something. Go for a walk. Get a little dopamine going. Do some exercise, shake up your routine, and do something, and you'll feel happier. If you want to feel better, do better, because actions lead and feelings follow. And the last one, number 10, the most important thing you can do if you want to be happy, read the Bible. Read the Bible. Friend, I'm telling you, I promise you, it sounds so silly, but the Bible is the book that will give you the keys to happiness. The psalm says in uh, Psalm chapter 1, 1 and 2, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Get that. You can become unhappy if you hang out with the wrong people or hang out in the wrong places or sit down with the wrong folks. Happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked. Stop listening to people on CNN tell you how to be happy. Stop listening to people on the Internet tell you how to be happy. Stop listening and delight, he says, how happy is he whose delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates it, meditates on it day and night. I'm telling you, friend, the word happy there, some translations say blessed, is in the Old Testament, Asher. Asher translates to happy. You will be happier if you read the Bible more. You will be happier if you spend more time in God's Word. The Holy Spirit has promised. He will remind us. He will prepare us. He will arm us. He will defend us. He will help us to have answers to the troubles that we're struggling with. You will be happier, friend, if you read the Bible. Trust me on that. How happy is the one whose delight is in the Lord's instruction. He meditates on it day and night. Look, 37 minutes, okay? If I gave you 10 quick things to make you happier, there's millions of them, but they're all basically centering around the one thing. Nobody can make you happy except you, and God will help you if you pray and ask him to and spend some time in his word. Friend, I want you to be happy. I want you so, I want so badly for you to be happy because I know what it's like to lose a son, and without being able to find happiness again, I probably would have put a bullet in my head. This is serious. It's important. Dennis Prager says happiness is a serious problem. And I'm telling you, you can't get through this life if you don't find some joy. You've got to. You've got to. And you've got to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren Podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get one free special episode every month. Not free because they support us. Patrons and partners get an extra episode every month. They get transcripts. They get all kinds of bonus stuff. Partners like you help us to stay ad free and keep growing. We're doing both. We're not buying ad. We're not selling ads. We're also growing because of the patrons. Check it out. Patron dot podbean dot com and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and go to my website w1md dot com slash prayer to help us uh, join with us and pray or pray have us pray for you join that prayer community it's amazing and also on w1md dot com slash newsletter is my weekly prescription it's a great letter that goes out all over the world that's going to be a wonderful place for this community to come together online and it's going to be a beautiful thing w1mb.com slash newsletter hey pray for us may 6th is the christian book awards check it out pray for us about that the theme music for the show is water into wine by tommy walker graciously provided for free by tommy and the good people who are changing the world at tommy walker ministries right there yeah that's tommy get the music for free and consider supporting tommy's great work at tommy walker ministries 
WilliamWalkerMinistries.org. TommyWalkerMinistries.org. Don't forget, we need your prayer and you need ours. WLeeWarnMD.com slash prayer. WLeeWarnMD.com slash prayer. Let me know which microphone you like. And remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. You have to start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day. Turning back